Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to just kind of cover, uh, once we can get things figured out, um, I'm going to cover uh, really kind of what the theme is, and then I'm going to go into more advanced stuff, because I think we're, I think most of us at least are a little bit higher level. Um, and then, uh, uh, and then we'll just kind of go from there. But you guys are more than welcome to like stop me and ask questions or anything like that. I don't like to do the whole questions when you're done kind of thing, because uh, I might lose train of thought or, or forget about what I said or whatever. So if we're, if we're going along and somebody has a question, feel free to holler at me. Say, hey, stop it. I've got a question. And I'll, uh, I'll try to address it right then and there. Okay, I said right there. So those of you that weren't here um, last time, uh, my name is Clifton Hatfield. I'm missing a name tag, but uh, Hatfield, like the Hatfield McCoys. Uh, basic background on myself, I've actually got it a little bit in the slideshow, but uh, I started web development back in uh, 2004, um, and just, that was before I knew anything about uh, really WordPress. Uh, I got involved with uh, web development, fell, found an interest and a passion for it really when I was overseas. Uh, I spent uh, I spent six years in the military, and while I was in Kosovo serving, uh, I had a lot of downtime, and uh, I actually picked up a book, web development book, and started reading about it, and I was like, wow, I couldn't get enough of it. I loved it. I loved the idea that I could just sit at a computer, create something that you know thousands and thousands and thousands of people could use. Um, so I started working on it, and I started at the very basics, HTML and CSS, and I'm, probably everybody started right there too. I just thought it was so cool. Um, and then I just went, moved on to more advanced stuff, uh, kept learning and reading and writing code, constantly writing code. Uh, moved into a PHP development uh, in JavaScript and uh, uh, MySQL and working with databases. Uh, so back in probably, I don't know, maybe five years ago, um, I was really introduced to WordPress and uh, loved the idea that it had a solid framework and a solid platform that I could build on. I didn't have to recreate the wheel. I had to build something myself um, because, you know, if any of you out there are developers, you know that's that's a lot of hard work, uh, especially maintaining the framework and um, keeping up with security updates and everything can be a really big hassle. So uh, when I found WordPress and how solid it was and the huge community, the documentation, and all the support that it had, uh, really drew me in. So I started building everything, uh, really everything that I could uh, on WordPress. Uh, for that specific reason. I'm, uh, I'm a husband, this is my beautiful wife back there, Ashley, say hi Ashley. Hi. And uh, father, we have two little boys. Um, and uh, so that's that's really my world. Um, anybody have any questions about who I am or <laughs> what I like to do for a living or what I do for fun or? I'll be waiting for Brian. Yeah, it's not recognizing your drive. Yeah, it's not recognizing your thumb drive. Oh, there he is. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I heard a noise. Yeah, we heard well, it hasn't, rec it hasn't recognized the... There, uh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't recognized the screen yet. Yeah. yeah, he's got it for, well, is it plugged in all the way? First, <laughs> first, 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 Yeah, it is. It just we don't get the projector going. I guess I could describe the Wing visuals. It. <laughs> Wing it. What do you got? Sure. Go off the top of my you head. You can hold the laptop then. <laughs> <laughs> so it detected it right when the. And, uh, and like I said, I, I actually I created. I use Google Docs. I don't know if any of you guys use Google Docs for Google Drive, but it's, it's awesome. Uh, I create all any kind of um, presentation that I do, you know, documentations, anything like that. I, I set it up with Google Docs. Um, and then uh, there's some on the back. Yeah, it's, it's, it's saying no signal. It's saying no signal. There you go. Yes. Right there. We'll make it available online too. 
Um, so you can go back and follow. Her. Thank you. <laughs> well done. So if you need a little weight, throw this, push that bag on it. What's that? Yeah. You go ahead. Um, I don't know if I can get too much for the bag. Do what? There we go. Yay. You finally made it. Good job. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> All right. So WordPress themes. We already talked about uh, what we're going to cover. Underlying unifying design for a blog. I should stand up here so I can because we don't have a clicker, do we? Oh, there's a one note right there. No, that's not, oh, that's no, that's not, not it. Not it. Okay, so uh, underlying unifying design for a blog, that's I kind of like, uh, it's a great way to describe it. So I already talked about my background a little bit, a father, a husband, um, web developer uh, at night, I'm a ninja, and I've been creating games and plugins for the past five years. I've built uh, hundreds of blogs, uh, my wife and I are actually a team on that, and uh, she's the designer and I'm the developer, so we kind of make a great team on that. And then I've, I've written some uh, plugins. Uh, that have had thousands of downloads worldwide. So every day I, um, I get more and more downloads on, on, on those plugins. So what is a theme? A WordPress theme is a collection of files that work together to produce a graphical interface with an underlying unifying design for a blog. What the heck does that mean? When I read that, I was like, what? So in English, I just basically said, it gives your blog its appearance. Um, it's what your visitors see when they actually come to your blog. It's kind of that outermost layer uh, of your website. Uh, it's got the graphics and the colors and the typography of your website. So, uh, as you can imagine, that's an important part of your website. I mean, of course, you want it to function properly, um, but you want it to be attractive to your visitors, uh, be, be able to draw them in, uh, whatever your target is, and deliver your content properly. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, and sometimes it is not so awesome. So here's an example of a theme. This is a really basic theme. I actually pulled this right off of uh, WordPress's uh, website. And this is their example of a theme. It's pretty basic. You can see the calendar, and here's some uh, blog posts, and th that's what somebody sees when they come to the website. It's not really exciting, but it, it gets the job done. All right, kind of came out a little loopy. Not all themes are created equal. I'm gonna talk about three different types of themes, just some of the basic areas in the themes. We've got Free themes, premium themes, and freemium themes, all right? So first we'll talk about free themes. The cost, okay? Well, they're free. I think that goes uh, without saying. Uh, but they've got some downsides to them. Yeah, they're free, but they're also, they a lot of them lack flexibility uh, and customization. You're usually strapped into what they look like. A lot of times they're white and black design, not a whole lot of options. You can't add a background, you can't do, the, do this, do that, uh, which is a turnoff for a lot of people. You've got less features, plain appearance like I talked about, uh, but they're great for content delivery. If you just want to get out there and blog, if you, wanna, uh, if you just want to deliver content um, and you don't care what your website looks like, you don't care um, you know, if it attracts people, you just want to write and put content out there, they're great. It's free, you know? Um, and it, it's able to get straight to the point. You, people aren't distracted with, uh, with um, you know, videos, they're not dis distracted with um, subscription boxes or anything like that. But they're often unsupported and have slow development. Uh, why would somebody put a whole lot of effort into um, maintaining or supporting a free theme if they're not getting paid for it? A lot of people like to get something for their work. Uh, and they're often outdated. Uh, and that's a big, that's really a big one. I should have made that a little bit bigger. Uh, I have a lot of people that come to me. Like I said, I, I build blogs, and some people come to me and they're like, why, why would I want to pay you if I can just go out there and get a free theme? It's not going to cost me anything. Well, because a lot of times those, those themes are outdated. You know, they were created in 2006 or 2007. They don't support the latest version of WordPress, or they have some kind of security issue. They're thirsty. So that right there is enough to let people know, how, all right, well maybe I shouldn't be just looking at free themes, maybe I need to put a little bit of money in, into, uh, into a, um, a premium theme. So premium themes, the cost paid, but sometimes they're free, all right? I, a lot of people are confused, uh, and they believe that a premium theme means, okay, I have to dish out money for it. Not necessarily. There are some really great premium themes out there that are free, uh, and in fact, uh, I'm a big fan of the default WordPress themes, 2010 and 2011. Um, it, it, yeah, I'm sorry, 
2011 and 2012. Um, they are the great. Um, they've added uh, more options and flexibility. You can do things like you know upload a background, upload um, uh, header images. Uh, you can do a lot of different customizations with them. Uh, premium themes often have a beautiful appearance. Um, you can tell whoever developed the theme has really put a lot of time and effort into um, making the theme attractive uh, and look great. So custom layouts goes into the uh, more options of flexibility. You can kind of make things look cooler, um, uh, switch your uh, uh, sidebars around, things like that, your footers. And it's often supported and maintained. That's a big one for uh, premium themes. If you're going to pay for a premium theme, and a lot, well, like I said, a lot of the free themes, um, they have support or they're maintained. You can go to the developer and say, hey, I'm having trouble. Or um, there might be a large community, a forum that supports it. Um, you know, I can think of like Thesis, uh, Woo themes. Some of those are some of the big dogs, uh, page lines. Some of those that are premium themes that are free and paid that have a large community. Um, so I always recommend if you're going to be looking for a theme, yeah, the free themes are great, but there's a lot of uh, downsides to those. I would uh, suggest uh, also taking some time and looking into some free or premium themes to see what they offer, and you can find something that's going to match what you're looking for. Like I said, customize to fit your needs and your deepest desires. Right, um, premium themes. I got a quick question. Yes. On the, on the fee themes, is that licensed per website typically? And I know it varies per developer. Or is by the website or by the company that would buy it? And use it more yeah, uh, I'm actually going to talk about licensing here in just a second, but. Um, it really just depends on the, 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 the company or the, 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 the developer uh, and what kind of license they have on it. Now, technically, and like I said, I'll talk about this just a minute, but technically all uh, WordPress software, whether it's themes, plugins, or whatever, should be licensed under the GPL um, or something similar. Not everybody follows that rule, and uh, I'll talk about that in just a second. But um, a lot of these premium themes offer what's called a developer license, and with the developer license, typically is an unlimited uh, domain licensing, as long as it's your, yours. Um, so freemium themes, uh, the cost is free with the option to pay. So why would you pay for something if it's already, if you got it for free, right? Um, well, freemium is, it, sometimes they have maybe a footer link, crediting the, uh, the developer or the company that actually created the theme. So if they're going to give you a, a, a theme for free, yeah, you can have this great premium theme for free, but I want you to put my link in the footer or advertise for me somehow. Some, some of them have ads. Um, or if you download a freemium theme, um, it may have some restrictions on it, uh, kind of like demo versions of software. I'm sure some of you have downloaded some. You're like, well, the software is free, great, and then you download it, and you're like, oh. I can't even. I can only use part of it. So premium themes are a lot like that. They restrict the features um, or what are offered. Now, if I'm going too fast for anybody, please let me know, and I'll go back over anything. All right, licensing, GPL licensing, and open source. So what's open source? Well, when I first heard open source, I thought it was free. I thought open source meant free. Wait a second. This guy says it's open source, but I'm paying for it. Well. That's not right, that's, that's wrong. Well, actually it is right. It says open source means free, right? Yes and no. If anybody's read anything about uh, open source or GPL, uh, it means free as in free dumb, not free as in price. Not <laughs> free like those cheese samples you swipe at the grocery store, okay? It's freedom. I have the freedom to get this and redistribute it. I have the freedom to change it. I have the freedom to improve it. Um, even um, take some of the code out of it and use it in other projects, as long as I credit um, the person, the, the, you know, the developer. Uh, so GPL is the freedom to receive and change the source code. Now, I, I just said WordPress themes and plugins should all be covered under the GPL licensing uh, because WordPress is GPL. And if you go and purchase a premium theme, that means you should be able to have access to its source code, be able to see how it was developed, how it was written. You can go in and, um, like what I do is I like to go in and look at the code and try to figure out what they did. And maybe they're doing something that I've never done before or uh, an improved method of how, how, um, you know, how I wouldn't have done it. Um, where proprietary um, software, you know, so like, um, 
like PowerPoint, you know, some of these Microsoft Office, these are all proprietary that you have to pay big, big money to be able to use. And uh, open source is just, is growing, it's huge now. A lot of people are pushing open source and going to open source, um, and as it should be. Um, I think that, uh, I think that there are other ways to be credited um, than trying to monopolize on, you know, every piece of software that, uh, that is made available. So all WordPress software should be covered under the GPL. I already talked about that. Themes and plugins, that's something to look for, you guys, when uh, you are looking at plugins. Uh, I've come across some pl WordPress plugins that are not open source, um, where I, you know, if I get their code and I try to look in there, it's, it's, uh, it's protected uh, or it's encoded. Some people do that. And they claim to encode it um, for delivery reasons and uh, uh, performance uh, enhancements. but. I think it's just because they want to protect their stuff. And the, some of the other reasons are they're doing something you don't want them to do, and they're trying to hide it. Yeah, that's a very good point. They could be calling home that's with a, information. Yeah, that's a very good. That's a very good point. All right. So customizing your theme. All right. So I think a lot of us probably want to get to this point. Um, this is the this is the fun part. So customizing your theme. Never ever ever, ever edit your core files of WordPress, ever. Okay? Ever. ever. <laughs> All right, this is a bad idea. It's bad practice. You're going to kick yourself later if you ever do it. And you're like, ah, I'll just change this. No big deal. And then you forget about it. And then what happens is WordPress is like, yeah, WordPress, you know, 3.6 is out. And you're like, yes, I'm gonna, it's got some great new features. And you go to update it, and boom, your changes are lost because it overwrote those changes that you made in the newest update. So... Never, ever, ever update your core files, all right? It's bad practice. I, out of all the years that I've been developing with WordPress, I've never had an, a reason to actually um, change any core files. I've, I've looked through forums and stuff, and when I've had a problem or I can't think of how to do something, and I see guys who are like, oh, we'll just go into the, you know, the includes file and, uh, you know, and change line 300 and do this in the core files, and I'm like, eh, nope, not doing that. You're going to be kicking yourself in the long run for that. So never change the core files when you get to that point. All right, so how to easily customize a theme. So I think some of us are on different skill levels here. Some of us are developers. Some of us are new. Um, and you're probably thinking, change the core files. I don't even know what a core file is. All right, so what we're going to do is we're talking about how to easily customize a theme. Well, go premium. Like I said, a lot of the premium themes are going to give you the option and the flexibility to customize it very simply just from the, the WordPress dashboard uh, where you can log in, uh, upload a header just like you would to, you know, uh, upload a picture to your header just like you would for Facebook, um, change your background colors, change your fonts, things like that. Um, so premium themes should offer something like that, but before you buy a premium theme, see if there's a demo version that you can test out. Um, a lot of premium themes have a demo that you can go in and you can kind of check out or you can at least read the features that are available because you don't want to spend, you know, uh, 20, 30, 40, 100 dollars on a premium theme and then to find out that you can't change the color of your links. That, I mean, that's no fun, right? So does it fit your needs? Before you make any purchasing um, decisions on a premium theme, make sure that it does uh, offer the uh, options that you're looking for. So. For the hardcore customizing, first you have to be a ninja, all right? It took me many years to learn how to be a ninja, but I've got to that point, so I'm doing some hardcore customizing, and I love it. So all WordPress themes should be GPL licensed. I, look, I, I already said that uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, customizing theme core files is bad practice, all right? And utilize the functions.php file. So for those of you that are gone beyond, have gone beyond the I'm just going to tinker around with the premium theme options. Yeah, I can change the background color. Okay, cool. But I want to do some really cool stuff. I've learned how to write PHP, or I've been able to, uh, I know how to write PHP, um, or HTML, or CSS, or whatever. Uh, I want to start making some changes. There's great documentation, and I've, I'll provide a link on here as well. I'll talk about the uh, functions.php file in a minute. Uh, but that is your, that is your theme's um, great file. You can go in and you can expand the uh, functionality of WordPress using that file. Okay, you can you can um, you can add uh, you can add different uh, different uh, pieces of uh, um, elements onto your blog um, by 
editing your functions.php file. Okay, so more hardcore customizing, the functions.php file. All right, so now we've gone beyond just the premium, uh, premium options and, and customizing, and we wanna do something really cool, okay? I've provided the location where the functions.php file is. For those of you that are thinking about uh, um, diving into the actual development realm of uh, WordPress, and uh, it acts much like a plugin. So, oftentimes, before I go out and I I download a plugin or I um, decide to look for a plugin, um, I decide if I can write the functionality myself. All right, if it's something like really simple, for example. I'll give you a perfect example. Just yesterday, uh, I wanted to change the email address that comes from my blog every time someone subscribes or registers for my blog. Now what happens is when a user registers for your blog, they receive an email from WordPress and it's like WordPress at yourdomainname.com. That's, that's, I don't want that. I want it to be from me. I want it to say from Clifton Hatfield at cliftonhatfield.com. Okay. So, yeah, I found a few plugins that made this available, but the last thing I want to do is add another plugin to my, um, and we haven't talked about plugins, but the last thing I want to do is add another plugin to my WordPress installation. So what I did was um, I quickly looked up the hook on how to add and change the, uh, the email, and I went into my functions.php file, wrote up that code block real quick, just, I don't know, maybe it was five or six lines of code, and boom, there we go. Now I didn't have to install another plugin, because I don't know what this guy's doing. Like you said, maybe you know, maybe there's, he's doing something that I don't, I don't want happening. Maybe he's, you know, making calls home. Um, and uh, um, I know that I've written five or six lines of quick code that it's lightweight, and I know exactly where it is and how it was written, and you know, and and how it's being maintained because I'm the one who wrote it. And you can do that in your functions.php file. So. Uh, some other capabilities, you can use that file to change default behaviors of your theme or WordPress. Now, we're probably going to get into this more uh, hooks, actions, and filters later. That's a little bit more advanced for, um, on a developer level. Um, but once we get there, we'll talk more about that, uh, maybe in another group. Um, uh, you can turn on some theme, su theme supports, um, post thumbnails, menus, um, i trying to think of what else is added there, but um, post types. So let's say you've downloaded a premium theme and it doesn't support post thumbnails. You know, you go to a blog or a website and you see these nice little thumbnails next to the blog post and you're like, wow, how, how do, my theme doesn't do that. How do I, you know, how do I do that? I want to be able to do that. Well, WordPress has great documentation. I'm not going to cover how to do that specific thing. If you need help with that, you're free to contact me um, on that. But by adding just one line of code into your functions.php file, we'll add support for post thumbnails. Same thing with menu, custom menus um, and uh, post types. So just because um, your theme doesn't support it doesn't mean that you can't add it just by going to uh, your functions.php file. So like I said, several blocks of code to expand the functionality of an active theme. It gives you the ability to go into a premium theme write your own code and expand its functionality of what it can do or if you don't have that capability you can hire somebody um, i've had people come to me thinking that they've had to get a whole new theme built just because their current theme doesn't support let's say they wanted to add a subscription box to their to their blog and like oh this theme doesn't support it now i've got to you know pay somebody to write me a new theme no all they need to do is jump on your functions.php file write the code in that file and it'll add it right to your blog Right, we've got even more hardcore customizing. Now, we're moving on to the next level. If functions.php file is still not enough for you, what would you do? Would you go in and edit the um, core files of the theme? No. I've done it before, I'll admit it, but it's still that's still bad practice. If you go buy a premium theme, let's say I go buy a thesis, which is one of the most popular premium themes I can think of. Um, I don't want to go in and start hacking his files, okay? The reason why is the same reason why I don't hack the WordPress core th files, because if he rolls out an update and I decide to upgrade, I'm going to lose those changes that I've made. That's a bad idea, okay? 
So WordPress has thought about that, and they, they've, they've implemented what's called child themes to take care of situations like that. So a child theme is dependent on its premium theme. I'll give you guys an example. I buy Thesis, which is the premium theme I was just talking about, and I want to add some functionality to it. I want to add a subscription box to the home page. Okay? I'll talk about that in just a minute, actually. I, think. I want to add a subscription box to the home page, and I don't want to I don't want to edit his files, so how do I put that subscription box without editing his files? Well, I create a child theme, and the child theme is basically a secondary theme to my thesis theme. I'm making a child of it, okay? And it's going to be dependent on its parent theme's files. So functions.php file and the child uh, will overwrite the uh, parents. Um, just, just kind of talking about how to set one up. I've got, a, I'll put, a, I've got a link on here in the resources to get more in depth about the child theme. But basically, you can take a, uh, a file of your core premium theme, copy it, change it, put it in your child theme folder, and then when Thesis rolls out an update, your your child theme is safe because it's not being updated. It's the parent theme that's being updated. So. Um, it's, it's a great idea to, anytime you want to customize your parent theme, I suggest uh, creating a child theme. It's super easy. It's just a CSS file with some headers um, in it, and um, uh, there's some documentation on the website that goes much more detail. If I covered all of that, we'd be here all night. So uh, just kind of give you, I want to give you guys an overview of some of this stuff and then give you some resources you can check out. And then you can see here um, that the child theme is actually still placed into the uh, themes directory uh, for those of you that uh, are going to do some customizing. And the hardcore customizing continues. So um, here's a little bit more detailed example of what I just told you guys. You know, if you want to add a subscription box to your themes homepage, it doesn't support it. What we're going to do is we're going to create a duplicate of the parent's index.php file. This, that's its main front page file, its homepage. Uh, we're going to duplicate it and we're going to put it into the theme, the child theme directory. Okay? So now we've got two files of the exact same. All right? Next, I want to edit the child themes index.php file by adding the subscription box in there. So I'm making its custom, uh, custom changes. So now when the parent theme is updated, that second duplicate file that I created is not going to be affected, so we're safe. All right, guys? And that you were. Uh, I've lost a lot of code by forgetting that I changed uh, uh, core files and then roll out an update and then um, lost those changes. So why go through the trouble? Why would you go through the trouble of all of this? Well, uh, GPL gives us the freedom to copy and prove already written code. That's awesome, but it's not always a good idea, like I was saying. The child theme protects changes from the update monster. Uh, when the parent theme is updated, the child theme isn't. Just covered that. Uh, our changes, our changes may not be compatible with the recent updates, but at least you didn't lose all your work. So, thesis rolls out an update and they've changed their home page. Now your subscription box is all funky looking and it doesn't work right and it looks goofy and everything. But now you can go into your child theme, make some tweaks, and it looks beautiful again. And you didn't lose any 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 uh, any of your work. So always remember, think twice before customizing your core the core theme files. Create a child theme, and only you can prevent forest fires. So responsiveness and awesomeness. If there's in yes. the functions file, um, if you in a child theme, if you create a function in that child theme's function file, and then the parent updates with a function in that functions file with the same name, is there going to be a conflict? Yes. Or will does WordPress know about that? No, okay. it, there will be a conflict, um, and same thing with plugins too. So, I mean, functions and functions or methods or whatever, they all need to be unique. Um, so that, yeah. But so it, you should put it in your own little namespace if you're doing that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, just you know, you put your own namespace on there, and then um, um, and just yeah, just keep it unique. Really, is all you really need to worry about. But it will override. You can you can write child. Um, you can you can write your uh, in your functions.php file in your child theme, and it will override. Your parent, so okay. you can write functions in there to override that, so you don't have to hack okay. your parents' functions. Okay. PHP file. 
All right, so responsiveness and awesomeness. Big things come in small packages. Mobile devices have never been so popular. How many of you guys have a cell phone? Huh? That's it? I'm the only one that has a cell phone? You guys awake? I'm the only one that has a cell phone? Okay. So everybody gets on their cell phone. Everybody has a smartphone. Um, some people have dumb phones, but um, I would say majorities have smartphones. Now, fast web browsing, powerful processors, high screen resolutions, broad demographics and on the go. Well, uh, that basically I think describes the mobile market. Uh, you know, people, I mean, everybody has tablets and cell phones and um, you know smartphones and everybody's getting on their phone. If I have a question, you know, I don't think, hmm, I wonder who can I call? No, I'm boom, and I get my phone out and I have the answer just like that. You know, Bachelor and I are, are uh, discussing something and we're like, you know, I'm right, no, she's right, and we'll get off the phone and see who's, you know, who's right. Um, so everybody's turning to their phone, but that's a good thing and it's a bad thing. So the bad thing is, is that mobile browsers zoom out to the width of the website. I'm sure a lot of you have gone to a website on your phone and you're like, oh, I need to check out the scores or check out the uh, you know, stock market or something like that. And you go in and, and all of a sudden you can't see the numbers and you got to start doing the pinch to try to zoom in and zoom out and you're trying to click links and it's just causing a headache and you're like, forget this. Well. That's the problem. It's difficult to read. It's difficult to touch links. It's difficult to navigate. So, what is I know what awesome it, awesomeness is, but what's responsiveness? Responsiveness is how your site reacts to the screen it's being displayed upon. Minimizes issues by adjusting to the screen. Responsive design is very important with delivering the right content. So, basically, responsive design is. You can have the same theme. There's a lot of really great responsive themes out there. More of you created every day. Um, sure. Responsive theme is going to adjust and collaborate. Uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry. Um, adjust to um, and calibrate to the size of the screen uh, that it's being viewed on. So if you pull out your phone, okay, and you go to a website, the website's going to respond or recognize that it's on a mobile device and adjust. So you don't have you know, these little links that you're trying to click. You don't have, it, it responds with making buttons, typically are what you're gonna see rather than links. Uh, it's gonna see buttons, so you're gonna be able to click those. Um, images are gonna, are gonna resize. Uh, and it's actually, some of these responsive, responsive themes are going to uh, actually move uh, some elements around to align them, because you are more likely to you know, scroll up and down on a responsive theme. <coughs> So why is responsive important? I just kind of covered some of that. It's mobile friendly, uh, mobile advertising, mobile traffic, professionalism, uh, user friendliness, increased conversions, if that's your thing, and current location. Kind of off topic, but it's still cool. Uh, you may go to some of these websites on your phone and it's gonna ask what's your current location to so do some geolocation stuff. Uh, if, if, um, if you uh, click okay, then they're gonna be able to pinpoint uh, your location, which will help with like filling out forms, um, or maybe like finding res local restaurants, ATMs, things like that. So I've got an example for you guys. We've got Cheesecake Factory here, right around the corner. Um, so let's imagine you own a restaurant. I'm going to talk about why it's important, why it's so important to have a responsive um, theme. Uh, so let's imagine you own a restaurant, and you run some ads in a popular iPhone app. Your food looks delicious and a person clicks on your ad. They want to quickly see your menu and your prices, but your website isn't responsive. Uh-oh, now what? Instead, they see blurry slideshow and tiny links. That might be beautiful on your desktop, but it's a customer repellent on a mobile phone, which of course is not cool. So here's an example. This is a screenshot of my phone, and this is uh, Cheesecake Factory's uh, full website right here. And you pull that on your phone. I mean, who can read that? Nobody can read that. You know, and they actually have a slideshow there, and yeah, that looks good and everything. But uh, if I want to eat at Cheesecake Factory, I want to look at their menu. I want to maybe check out some of their prices. Uh, maybe look at their hours. Uh, I can't do any of that from right here from this home page, and that's annoying. I'm gonna jump off and say, okay, well, you know, maybe uh, maybe Fleming's has a you know a nice responsive layout. I'll go check them out. Boom, I get to their menu. Uh, it's a lot easier. So. This time, your theme is responsive. A person clicks on your ad, they want to quickly see your menu and prices, your theme has beautifully responded to a smaller screen on the phone, and instead of the slideshow and tiny links, 
They see big, beautiful buttons they can easily touch. So here is Cheesecake Factory's responsive uh, theme or uh, design. I mean, that's certainly not on WordPress, but it's, it's a great example. They still got a nice, um, pretty slideshow up here, but it has responded to the screen size and it has shrunk down. So it's still beautifully displayed and visible. And now down here we have buttons. These are the links. These are the same tiny links that we saw on the full site, but they're obviously much easier for me to touch and navigate than uh, those tiny, tiny little links that are on the full site. So, uh, as more and more people have phones, and the more you know, we talk to people, we're like, you know, hey, check out my website or check out my blog. I blog regularly. Uh, they may pull out their phone right then and there, check it out, or you can pull your phone out and show it to them. And, and it's not, you're not like, you don't want to be like pinching, like, hey, you know, check out this. This is a great, you know. Blog, you know, how you like my site? You can just pull it out and beautifully um, display your uh, your blog and your responsive theme. So let me show you the way. Uh, this is a duplicate. I forgot to delete that. So now they browse your menu. They check your hours without any hassle from their phone. And ten minutes later, they're dining in your restaurant and complimenting your mobile website. Isn't that great? Look at that. That's that image is still uh, watermarked there. Just kind of grabbed it off of there. So that, <laughs> here's the resources, uh, some of the links for you guys. Um, and like I said, I'm gonna, I'll distribute this out to you guys, uh, have it online so you guys can go to these links and just read more detail. Um, I didn't want to get it too depth and really bore you guys. Um, so if you want more detail on certain um, areas that I talked about, using themes, child themes, how to create child themes, how do you go through and set up so you're ready to um, dive into that realm of things. Uh, you can, you know, that that's, I, I still, I know how to create a child theme, I still refer to that link often. Um, and then the functions.php file explained. Um, and then here is the, if you wanna browse some themes, you can do it from your dashboard of your WordPress installation or you can just go to this link right here um, and browse some of the free themes that are offered on WordPress. And then here's a few links um, to help if you want to learn more about responsive uh, web design, which I encourage you to do if you are a developer. Um, I by am I'm by no means an expert on uh, responsive design. I, um, I'm actually still learning a lot about it um, and how to handle like the uh, media queries and the CSS3 and, uh, and so on. But uh, here's some um, here's some great links. Um, actually Microsoft has a, a really good one. Um, and then here's a, a, a W3 uh, link for the media queries if you want to go in and learn about how how you can adjust your, CS, uh, your CSS uh, based off of media queries. What the media queries will do is when a phone, when, a, when, when somebody goes to your website on their phone, uh, you can adjust it. There's media queries for um, turning it to landscape mode, turning it to portrait mode. If you want your um, phone to look different, in portrait mode than you do in landscape mode, you can use media queries in your CSS file to make those adjustments, which I think is just awesome. Uh, and I'm, I'm having a heyday with, 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 with uh, utilizing that. So I think, oh, there's some of my links, like Clifton Hatfield, cliftonhatfield.com, and then Facebook, and then Empower Blogs is our uh, blogging company. And I'm actually really excited because um, just yesterday I, I finished um, moving um, our website uh, over into a responsive uh, design. Before it wasn't responsive. Uh, now it is responsive and it's awesome and I love it. Um, so if you guys want to check out uh, a great responsive theme, you can check mine out. I just finished it yesterday. It's in PowerBlogs.com. All right, so give me some questions, you guys. I covered quite a bit of stuff in just a small amount of time. Um, and I know I went, uh, it, because it's kind of hard to gauge you know, different levels of, um, of knowledge here. Um, I try to cover some of the basic stuff and then more advanced stuff. Also, the newbie question, I'm thinking, when you're talking about not modifying core, is the function PHP, is that core, or is that modified? Yes, you can modify, that's not a, that's not, that's part of your theme. Those okay. are part of your theme that's files. Not that's not like the WordPress So if, core I, if I modify that, and then later the theme gets updated, it might cover my changes to functions PHP. Yes. But if I did a child theme and had a separate function of PHP there, it would. Yes, you're right on. Core. See, you're keeping up. I core do programming. Are, I just don't do PHP. So okay, I'm, cool. I have a lot of background for, for that. Core functions would be anything outside of the context. Yeah. Core. Right. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and you know, I, I've done it before, and I'll hack 
themes and things like that, theme files, but then I just don't ever update them. Just that's not bad. that's not good practice. That's not a good thing to do. So um, you know, create a theme file or child theme file and then uh, and so the one them. change I did make to my site for just was I didn't like copyright notice and if I found where to change it, I assume I made it and the part that's going to get clobbered the next time I, I update it. So I did not make a child theme like <laughs> Yeah. That. And sometimes you could be safe. If they roll out an update and they don't change that file, then it's not gonna necessarily override. But um, you know, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's always a possibility too. So, yeah. Anybody else have any other questions? Since yeah. we have some, some newer people with themes, can you talk about when when to run away from a theme? Meaning, like, <laughs> what are some some things that oh, this theme looks awesome. It has everything. Like, yeah. is that a good thing or a bad thing? Or just kind of uh, paid doesn't always mean awesome and buy it. Yeah. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I can talk about it, but you can too. Yeah. Exactly. Um. Yeah, he brings up a really good point. Like, when to, when, what's a good theme, what's a bad theme? Well, the first thing you need to do is figure out exactly what it is you're looking for. Um, and then I always look for support. Um, what kind of support does it have? And when was it last updated? You know, is it regularly maintained? Um, that's, a, that's a huge one. Uh, especially if you don't have the skill set yourself to continue the development on it or make the changes that you need, uh, then you want to know that if you're paying, especially if you're paying for a theme, um, that it's going to have the support that you are looking for and that you need. Um, and uh, I don't, you know, what else? What else would well, you do? The reason there? I bring that up, I, I forget. If, um, at WordCamp Columbus this summer, um, somebody was speaking on themes and plugins and how, uh, like WooCom or WooThemes specifically, yeah. they, they brought up throws all these short codes and all these. And, and if you go on ThemeForest.net, I mean, they're the worst at this. Like, a theme looks like it can do it all. Yeah. They don't want a theme to do it all. Your theme really should just be the, the display of your site, and then the plugin should be the functionality. Yeah. So you so you you bring up a, yeah, that's a great great point. I'm so dealing with this with a client where she has all these things in her stupid theme that I hate. Yeah. But she doesn't want to you bring up a really great point there, and I'm, I talked about thesis a little minute bit, a minute ago, and you guys are free to um, look that up. I think it's uh, DIYthemes.com. Um, I have a lot of people come to me that have bought thesis. You know, I bought thesis because it was, I was, you know, referred to it, and it's, you know, it's supposed to be able to do everything that I want it to be able to do, and this and that. It's, you know, it's supposed to be so user friendly. Thesis is a very powerful theme. So is uh, you bring up WooThemes, Canvas. They've got, a, you know, a framework um, much like thesis. And uh, I love Canvas. I think it's a great theme, and you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Same with Thesis. However, these people are, are beginners. They're novice. They don't even know anything about programming. They just want a cool site. Somebody told them, well, go buy, you know, spend $100 and get Thesis. You can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, you can, but you need to be able to have the skill set to, to take advantage of that ability. So um, you really, before you jump in to a, a theme, especially if it's a higher end one like Thesis, and you know, they're, it's pretty pricey. I think it's like 70 or $80 maybe. Um, make sure that you're gonna be able to either do it yourself and customize it yourself, uh, or you know, have the funds or want to spend the funds to pay somebody else to customize it. Because uh, like you said, Thesis and Woo Themes Canvas, you know, it's got all the bells and whistles that you, know, you can do like nearly anything you want to the website. Um, to the theme, but you need to be able to have the skills to actually apply those changes. Now, I will say I do. Lo I love Woo themes. Um, they do have some. They have some great, great free themes, but then they also have some paid premium themes um, that do make it very simple to uh, to customize and change backgrounds and, and, and really, really get in depth. So, um, just because somebody recommends your theme or say it's you know super easy to use or anything like that, I would still do your you know your due diligence and. Um, and look that up yourself. So, anybody have any more questions? Anything else anybody wanted me to cover or talk about? Can yes, you in the back. Can you cover some like, really great basic plugins and why it's a little more to have too many plugins? Plugins? You want to talk about plugins? Yeah. Okay, we can talk about a little bit about plugins. Uh, I think you were talking about plugins a little bit when, when I came in, weren't you? Um, oh, what were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I have plugins this, plugins that. Well, the reason I ask is when I started, when I was introduced to WordPress, I found all these plugins. I'm like, oh my gosh, I need this and this and this. And this. Yeah, that's like a great idea. Bald, 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 bald. Yeah, I'll, well, I'll, I'll, I'll throw that out. I've actually. The number of plugins bald, isn't bald. what's going to bog it down. <laughs> it's what I 
It's well, it, it no, it's it depends on how those plugins were written. Mm -hmm. WordPress.com right now runs over 200 plugins per blog. I don't even I don't run that on any of mine. Yeah. Okay. It depends on the quality of the plugin exactly. versus the quantity. Yeah. But um, so but, uh, as far as on the on the uh, the quantity of it, uh, I've done a lot of work. I've gone into people who have had, you know, they're like, I need help. You know, I don't know what to do with my theme. I, you know, my blog's really slow. It's, you know, things are going crazy in there. I need somebody to just go in and kind of clean things up for me. But yeah, okay, I'll, I'll, you know, what's, give me a username and password. I'll dive in there. And I go in there, and it's like, it's like they've downloaded every single plugin that they've come across. They, you know, I know people have written blog posts and like, these are my recommended plugins. And they go in and they download and install every single one of them. And next thing you know, they've got 50, 60, 70 plugins going. And I'm like, what? What does this one even do? They're like, I don't know. I just read on a blog post that I need it. Cool. Yeah. yeah, and I'm like, all right, you have, you know, you have, you know, five plugins that add the Facebook like button to your blog. You know, how many plugins? You just need one. In fact, you don't even need one. You can use your functions out PHP file to do it, um, which is like <laughs> two lines of code. So you don't need, you know. So with plugins. I, I say um, definitely do your uh, due diligence on the, on your plugins too. Um, make sure your plugins are updated and they they've been um, you know they're regularly supported and maintained and updated. Uh, and you know try maybe look up some credibility on them. Um, the other thing is is you know learn about what your plugin is and what exactly it does when you set it or when you install it. After you install it, make sure you set it up. I have a lot of people they install. They get the plugin, they download it or whatever, and they install it, and now it's just running, but it's never been set up. And I'm like, you're just eating up resources. You know, it's not even doing what you wanted it to do. You know, well, it, it adds a Facebook like button to my, you know, to my blog. Well, so do these other three that you've already set up. Why do you have a fourth one that's not, you know, let's get rid of it. Let's let's dump it. Um, some other things that I can talk about with the theme is, or with plugins is that um, just because a plugin is not active and it and it needs an update, yeah, update it. Okay, inactive uh, plugins still need to be updated. Why? Because they could they could pose a security vulnerability on your site. That file is still there, even though it's not activated. It's still a file on your server that may be vulnerable uh, for you know a, an attack. So uh, that's a big question that I get with a lot of people, or something that I find is you know they have 15, 20 outdated plugins, and you know, and I'm like, what do you? Well, no, it's okay. They're not active. Well. It, there's still files on your server, so we need to make sure that those stay updated. So, uh, when you're installing plugins, uh, do some due diligence. Make sure that um, a lot of the plugins in the plugin repository uh, tell you like when it was last updated. They try to do do a good job um, telling you like what version of WordPress it's compatible with, like up to 3.2 or something like that. So you don't want one that was you know you know uh, last updated three years ago and it's compatible with like 2.6 or something. You know you want something that's going to be more updated and secure. So that's something to check out with, with plugins. Um, and then, you know, make sure you keep them updated too. Uh, make sure that they're SEO friendly. Yeah. Uh, there's one that we have a client that, it, that did the same thing. Great plugins. Oh, we found it. Looks great on the site. We ran a report against it, came up with over 1,500 errors that wow. search engines were coming up with. It. De deactivated it, got rid of it. I mean, instead of just leaving it inactive. Rid of the hard files, even deleted the database tables. Yeah, that's a great. Yeah. And then boom, started running a lot smoother because it added, added no functionality to it as well. But hey, it looked cool. Yeah, well, that's so a lot of people, you know, when it, that's all they really care about in the beginning until they un really understand. We open up their eyes and explain some things too. Uh, another question that I get a lot is um, when should you update WordPress? They update, they roll updates out. They don't really have a schedule update, but. Um, uh, but you know, I typically um, I typically tell people that they can update. Some of you might disagree, but I typically tell people that they can update their WordPress um, core files when actually WordPress rolls out an update. Um, you know, I, I do it the day of on a on a minor update. Okay, a minor update maybe like 3.2.1 because a lot of times those are just like you know minor. Those are usually like minor security updates, things like that. And I want to make sure that it stays updated with with uh, with that. And, and WordPress does a great job of their change log and keeping you updated with what's been changed and things like that. So you can quickly review that and decide for yourself. But when they do a major update, let's say when they jump from you know like three, 
you know, 3.3 to 3.4 or something like that. And they've added a lot of functionality, um, maybe some new features, some things like that. Uh, I like to wait a week or two, maybe even wait until the first minor update is rolled out. Um, it gives them a chance to, uh, the community as a whole, the millions and millions of blogs that are out there, it gives them a chance to uh, maybe find some possible issues uh, or bugs that are in the, uh, in the software, in the new software. So um, that's my take on it. That's what I tell people. Uh, major updates, I like to wait. Minor updates, I'm like, eh, I'll go ahead. But the biggest thing is always backup. Always do a backup. There's some plugins out there that do some, like do like database backups and stuff for you. Um, if you're running cPanel uh, on your hosting account, you can do uh, you know like a full backup or something, so you have a, a nice um, zip file um, saved. But always do a backup before you do your updates as well, because you don't want to lose your stuff or you know wind up with any corrupt files or anything, because that's that's a big nightmare, and then you're trying to call the hosting company and, and all that, so you don't you don't want to deal with any of that kind of stuff. So, anything else? You guys have any more questions? Anything else you guys want me to quickly cover before we move on, or are you guys ready to go home and get some sleep? No? Okay. Well, um, Nathan? Oh, well, thank you for presenting. Uh, oh, and I wanted to put out there, too, if anybody like thinks of something afterwards or whatever, you're more than welcome to um, hit me up on Facebook or, or you know, I can do my email out to you guys or whatever. Um, and I also have a, uh, a support group on Facebook. Um, yes. You guys are a part of it. Yes. Uh, and I encourage anybody to get on there. I started this Facebook group a couple years yeah. or about a year ago, and um, I was getting bombarded with questions and stuff from people, um, and uh, I didn't have the heart to charge somebody, you know, just <laughs> for one question. But yet again, when you got one question from you know 20 people. It, it adds up, you know, it takes a lot of time. So I started a support group about a year ago or a year and a half ago, and I invited like all my like guru internet friends, and I said, all right, I'm gonna start this group where if you have somebody that asks you a question, tell them to ask it in the group. That way, if you don't have time to answer it, maybe I do, and I'll answer it for you. Um, and then also, I was finding myself answering the same questions over and over and over and over and over again. Um, where I can now just answer it in the WordPress group and or in my support group, and you know all everybody that's in the group has the opportunity to see it. Um, or if somebody asks it again, asks it again, I can just shoot them a link to the answer. Um, so I should have put that link on on there, um, but uh, we can probably blast it out in the meetup. Yeah. Um, we can do it off our off the date WP. Yeah. Yeah, and well, you guys can for you know, our go Facebook in there. page. Um, and I, you know, I do my best to keep it free from like spammy type stuff and things like that. It's strictly for asking questions uh, and answering questions. We try to try to do a good job of maintaining that. So it is um, an active community. Yeah, it's and they do they do answer pretty quickly on any questions I've asked out there. Yeah, and there are some great questions. Yeah, um, just to spark your own interest. I don't know mm -hmm. the answer. I know the answer, but then someone else will give a different answer. So it kind of gets you going a little bit more. Yeah, and it's um, it gives you the opportunity to help as well as um, ask to or ask for help. Uh, so we try to do, you know, try to do, do both ways and get different opinions from everybody. So we'll get that linked yeah. out to everybody if you guys want to check it out. Cool. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. Well, we're going to put the slides on, slide share, we're going to do the video, so if you, you can always go back to it. Again, next month, Noel's going to cover WordPress 3.5, and then in January, we're going to talk about security and just trying to make your website more secure with WordPress. Um, thank you for coming. You know, it's a little bit smaller than last month, but it's getting closer to the holidays now, and I think people are still trying to get over the election process and <laughs> kind of decompress from the whole campaigning. Um, I know I'm still trying to. Um, well, we're, we'll we'll get to that point. This, the group will get bigger. Um, so I look forward to it. again. Thank you for coming, and feel thank free you. to stick around, chat up, and talk WordPress or whatever. Thank you again. Thank you.